So without further ado, I'd like to kick off the session by inviting Professor Angela Fawcett, the Vice President of the British Dyslexia Association. Professor Fawcett is a leading international researcher in dyslexia and other developmental disabilities, whose research approach is broad and interdisciplinary. Her presentation is on early screening and intervention preventing failure. Professor Fawcett. Good morning. Welcome to this session on early intervention. Now, I am passionate about early intervention. For me, it is the absolute key. And shall I tell you a secret? It's because my son was diagnosed as dyslexic when he was five and a half. Now, that was crazy. Nobody can be diagnosed at that age. But sure enough, he was confirmed to be dyslexic. I went to university as a 40-year-old a mature student to do my first degree and it changed the whole course of my life. So here I am today to share with you my excitement on early intervention. So why would we screen for dyslexia? It's the commonest developmental disorder. It's around 5% of children. It's genetic. So there's a 50% chance of being dyslexic if you have a dyslexic parent. And the exciting thing is that if you get support, then you can remediate the phonological deficits, the reading, uh, the spelling, and increase the confidence. But the problem is that without that support, then you will fall further and further behind. And it reaches the stage where, in the US, they have shown that you need 67 and a half hours of individual intervention to reach the level of your peers if you are diagnosed after the age of eight. So critical to get that early support. And it seems that the earlier support can be provided, then the better the outcomes will be. We call it the stitch in time approach. So our aim is to identify problems before the children fail. So what underlies reading? Well, when you look at this list, you'll see it's absolutely massive. A whole range of sub-skills. There's the saying, the seeing, the writing, the hearing. But underneath it all, the most important is the coordinating. And underlying that is the sensory motor cognitive circuits and the executive function skills. And so those are critical skills in being able to benefit from the early stages of reading between three and six. In terms of classroom readiness, this is now turning out to be one of the key areas in, for children being ready for school. Now, I don't know about Singapore, but in, um, the, in the UK, we find that the children come into school, they're not ready to listen, they're not ready to learn, they don't know about sitting down, they can't even uh, manage their own self-care, um, they have problems with language ability, they can't self-regulate, so if somebody hits them, they want to hit them back. Uh, they can't organize themselves and they don't remember what they're asked to do. And so it's absolutely key to have those children ready to learn when they arrive in school. So those skills must all be in place before a child can begin to get to grips with literacy. So we need to make sure that all those rudiments are in place before learning can begin. And here we have executive function. This is um, a new concept that people have begun to be very excited by, and it suggests that executive function, which includes reasoning, working memory, and self-control, can be improved. It's particularly good news because this is absolutely critical, not just for school, but for the whole of your life, for your success, for your mental and your physical health. And it needs to be progressively challenged throughout childhood so that uh, you can repeat with practice and become better and better. And children devote lots of time to things that they want to do. And here you can actually grab their motivation to, to begin to learn and take advantage of that. And the interesting thing is that it needs to be a very broad approach. Focusing narrowly on executive functions or even aerobic activities is not enough. It's more effective if you could address uh, a wide range of emotional, social and character building uh, skills. And these include things like martial arts, yoga 
uh, and the sort of curriculum that's been shown to improve executive function. The exciting thing is that the children who have the most difficulty have the most to gain from this type of work. And so it means that you can make a very real opportunity for them to catch up with their peers. And this is work from Adele Diamond in 2012. So here is our approach to preventing reading failure. We screen the children using a screening test developed in the UK by myself and my colleague Rob Nicholson. Uh, this is for four and a half years and above. Um, the dyslexia early screening test. For older children, we use the DSTJ, and we even have tests right up to adulthood. And we look at evaluating uh, a control study uh, with, with five and seven year olds, and then even with four year olds in nursery to see the impact that we can have with just a very short intervention. So we screen them for an at risk level, we identify 0.6 as a mild risk. 0.9 of the strong risk, and then we intervene for 12 weeks with the children that need help. And we have information on those children, on their motor skills, on their language and their working memory from our profile, a profile of strengths and weaknesses, um, ready for a structuring remediation, and we then give supporting groups of four for 12 weeks. And then we need to check the improvements because many of these interventions will fade out over time, so we need to see if it persists. Here are the components of our dyslexia screening test. We have early literacy letter names, we have phonological skills like rhyming and discrimination, working memory, a test of digit span, a cerebellar test from our own research, a test of balance, motor skill tests of beads and uh, bead threading and shape copying, and speed of processing tests. Uh, things like rapid naming and temporal processing. And these are all early indicators of dyslexia. And here's our first study, which we did with 64 five-year-olds versus controls. And up the side, we have the standard scores. So we are looking to see what, what their improvement is in the reading and the spelling. And uh, we have, first of all, the reading for the train group at the pretest for the pretest they're well matched with the controls. And you can see that the post-test, uh, our dyslexic group have made some significant improvement and a similar pattern for the spelling. So we've actually managed to accelerate their reading and spelling, um, making significant improvements from 88.9 to 93.2. So they're now in the normal range and the controls have actually got slightly worse. Uh, as time progresses, they fall behind. Here we have seven-year-olds. This was 36 seven-year-olds. And here we had a pre-test and a post-test and a delayed post-test to see whether it impacted over time. And you could see the reading um, at the pre-test. Uh, we have the pink of the controls. Um, and we can see the improvement in the reading, which persists post-test. So 3.4 uh, standard score points. And the spelling even better. 5.7 standard score points, and that's persisting six months later. And it shows some of the strongest effects that have been found in either the UK or the US studies, but it still means that the children, despite the support, are behind in reading. So the earlier the better. And now we have the preschool children aged four, and we gave them a terms intervention, and here this is an effect size, and so here we can see their performance in the blue squares is actually worse than the controls when they started. And in the purple blocks, this is their performance improvement in comparison to the controls. So very significant improvement. 85% of those children were at risk at four. By the time they got to five, none of them were at risk. And this remains so by the age of five, eight. Okay. So it seems to work, but the earlier the better. And if you wait till the children are older, then you will find there are persistent problems likely to indicate dyslexia. But if you work with the very young ones, you can get the children before those Matthew effects that defect their self-esteem and lower their performance. Um, okay. So the earlier, the better. So this was work that I did in Wales. And in Wales, it's an area of uh, deprivation for the UK. Many children will start school with poor language skills 
and without the ability, with, with little uh, classroom readiness. Um, and that's going to impact on their progress throughout life. So what we wanted to do was create a system for uh, a systematic support for children in their first term of school so that we could identify um, the children who were likely to struggle and provide support. And we involved the teachers and actually got the teachers to do the intervention for us. We just did the screening at the pre-test and post-test and it was refined uh, in the light of the results and with feedback from the teachers on what they found useful. And then it provides a free intervention which can be used in Wales and also across the world. So if anyone is interested, I can let them have a copy of the intervention. Um, we keep the, the system going over time and we keep records until the age, the age of 10. So it means that we can uh, actually change the face of special needs in the region um, in an, an area of austerity and lack of funding. So it means that even in re regions where there is little opportunity for support, you can actually provide a free system for support. So what does it include, the intervention? It's called hands-on literacy. It has phonological awareness, auditory memory and visual memory, standard components. But it also has manual dexterity and gross motor skills. And it's based on games. It's meant to be active, concrete, it builds on executive function and it can be adapted by the teachers to suit their needs. So you have things like listening and discriminating, um, memory, test consolidating memory, following instructions, uh, and motor components, and above all, fun. Um, we piloted it with 12 children and controls and we showed a significant impact on their knowledge of the first letter and their gains in, in letter recognition. So these are key precursors of literacy, and we showed this in just a 12-week intervention. So we've done a number of studies. This was 224 children in Bridge End. 78% of them improved their at-risk scores. 51% of them were no longer at risk. 10% improved, but not sufficiently to move into the no-risk group. The greatest improvement was from a very high 1.5 to only 0.4, so no evidence of risk there. And we were able to follow up 39 children in the first year, and 77% of them remained no risk. So in year two, 50% of these were reading at grade level. So a significant impact of just an hour a week for 12 weeks. We've done a much larger study since with 800 children, uh, 35 schools in the region, uh, aged four and a half. And we've used a whole school approach so uh, the children were pre-screened and 670 of them were given the, the test. So looking at the expected figures for um, problems, risk levels, 77%, 77 children, 11% were high risk and 166 were mild risk. Those are very much in line with the expected norms for the age group. And the question is, can we actually change the outcomes and change the way the teachers impact on the future for these children who are likely to have uh, long-term difficulties by giving short-term structured early support? Well, we have outstanding outcomes here. We have, uh, in the blue bars to the right, we have the children who showed no risk, but then uh, the white bars show uh, the high risk, the number showing high risk at pretest, and in the blue bar next to it, the post test, and next to it, the low risk, and then the, the low risk at post test. So only 5% of the children remained high risk, and 8.5% mild risk at the post test. So 86.5% of those children are no longer at risk after a 12 hour intervention. So, what have teachers learnt? It's not just that we've given them the tools to actually change their, their, their teaching, but they've actually learned the importance of assessment for learning, not just of learning, looking at the potential of the child. We've shown them that screening can be an important tool for them to identify areas of risk, and that we can link that to structured intervention for this broad range of skills. We've shown them that rhyming is a key uh, early phonological awareness skill that most children will benefit from support in this area 
They had no idea of this, despite many, many years of research. And so the teachers are passionate. They absolutely adore this. It's something that is run with no research funds involved, just based on the goodwill and the excitement of the teachers. Um, in last year, 48 out of 54 schools in the Vale of Glamorgan have 100% of their children going into their first year with no evidence for risk. And our school inspectors are really impressed with this approach because it can make the difference to the outcomes for a whole generation. We now have the whole of Pembrokeshire. It's four times the size of Singapore, very, very many less children involved, but uh, over 60 schools, and every school is now working on this approach. They're using it for the nursery schools, they're using it in the first years. It's become a whole school approach, um, and it's really been extraordinarily successful. So, what do we do next? Well, we talked this morning about new technology and what we can learn from new technology. That provides an efficient and effective approach to screening and remediation. It harnesses the motivation of, of children. If you could use tablets, iPads, because this is the new technology, it's very desirable. Instead of being the child who's struggling and underachieving, you're the one that can play with the iPad. Wow! And it combines the advantages of individual and group screening. We're now able to test up to 20 children at a time using a 30-minute test, uh, which provides individual data. And we've now uh, provided that important element of practice for remediation. And above all, we're creating a system which is fun and easy for the teachers to use. So this is our iPad system. Interestingly, our teachers won't be shifted from using VEST. They just love it. But they want to use this for year one and year two and for the older children. And so this will go up to year four and above. And it has a range of different tests in it. So it has naming ability. Um, it has um, a go-no-go, -no -go, which is a test of executive function. You press, if it's so, for, you press for all of the dogs except for this particular dog. And so that's tricky. It's very difficult for the little children to do. We have a test of memory, and that's uh, picture memory. We have letter naming. We have listening to sounds. We have um, a, a tapping test. We have a shape copying test. And we have hearing two different tones and identifying which is the first. And so it's, we've now collected norms for Wales, and we are able to use this across the country. But we need to do more research with it. We need to see how other countries uh, feel that it, whether about it as, to, as, as an interesting tool to move forward. But very easy to use. And even an autistic four-year-old, we had to keep letting him come back and try again because he loved it so much. Every time it said, well done, well done, he went, hooray, and, and, and raised his arms in exultation. OK, so here we have the final um, Rita iPad intervention and what we've done this time is this is a new iPad program developed by my colleague Rod Nicholson and we've taken a number of those tests that we used in those early interventions that I uh, described to you today and we have 15 programs suitable for children from years one to four and it includes things like letter knowledge, uh, the initial, middle and end sounds, I spy, first letter, rhyming, the odd one out, um, onset t uh, time and vocabulary. And in terms of reading, we have word attack, word choice and sight words. Uh, for older children, we have things like word flash. The, the word is flashed up as fast as you can, read it before it disappears. Dictation, comprehension, closed tests, fixing bugs in spelling, spelling test and a reading race. And that's now ready for evaluation, and we're about to use it with the schools across Pembrokeshire. So, these are exciting times for screening and intervention. And let me give you some further information here. So here are the articles that I mentioned, and the screening tests are produced by Pearson's. So, exciting times to move forward in um, screening and intervention preventing those, the development of those, failure, of those failures over time, 
using really a response to intervention as the Ministry of Education discussed with us this morning. And so I've about finished and I'd like to pass over to our next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fawcett. Your passion reminds us that there's always hope for all our struggling learners out there. I'd like to call upon um, Director of HR and Corporate Services and member of the GMT to present a ticket of appreciation for Professor Fawcett. 